are you sure you have all the props ready? All right, we're going with it. Welcome to another South Central Regional Library video. Hi, my name is Linda and I'm a librarian. Today, my assistant and I are going to tell you the story of Saskia's quest for treasure. And this is Saskia. Yes. Saskia was on her way home from baseball practice. Jack and Yusuf had already gone home and Jane was still out traveling interstellar space, so Saskia was on her own. She decided that today she'd take this little shortcut through the woods. She'd always passed it and had never gone down it before, but today she would. And she hadn't got very far. When she saw that seated beside the path was a... a seahorse. Yes. I know, seahorses live in the ocean and not in the forest, but today we're going with it. Hello, said Saskia. Hello, said the seahorse. Would you say that you have a kind heart? Interesting way to start a conversation, Saskia said, but yes, I think I do. Oh, said the seahorse, nodding wisely. Would you also say that you have an adventurous spirit? Uh, Sure, Saskia said. Then you are just the person I'm looking for, said the seahorse. Seahorse, can you go on a quest for me to get back my treasure? Who stole your treasure? Saskia asked. Oh, no one stole it, the seahorse said. I put it in a safe place, as you do for treasure. And I somehow accidentally activated the magical safeguards on it. So now it's locked up in a castle and it can only be retrieved by someone with a kind heart and an adventurous spirit. And that's not you, said Saskia. <laughs> the seahorse laughed. Oh, sweetie, I have no sense of adventure. Would you do this for me? Sure, said Saskia. Which way? The seahorse pointed a fin down the path. But that's the path I always take, Saskia said. There's no adventures here and certainly no castle. Oh, but now, now you're on a quest for treasure, the seahorse said. Things will look a little bit different now. Okay, said Saskia, and started down the path. After Saskia had walked for a little while, she heard a rustling in the bushes. She looked over to the side and saw that standing there was an elderly, wise-looking, wise-looking, We're going with it. Hello, young person, said the sheep. Do you have a minute to help out an oldie like me? I can try, said Saskia. Great, said the sheep. Can you pick that apple for me? Can you pick that apple for me? Saskia saw a lovely red apple on the tree just behind her. It was a little too high for her to reach, but on the third running jump, she grabbed it. Here you are. Saskia. Thank you, said the sheep. Now, throw it into that creek. Saskia raised an eyebrow and threw the apple into the creek, where it floated. Now, follow it downstream and report back, said the sheep. Report what? asked Saskia, who was beginning to actually kind of enjoy the weirdness of this day. You know. So, Saskia followed it along the side of the creek as the apple floated down the stream. Just around a bend in the creek, Saskia saw a horse lean over and grab the apple. Hello, young person, said the horse. Did the sheep get you to throw the apple into the water? Yes, said Saskia. Well, tell her thank you and tell her that her debt is paid, said the horse. Okay, so Saskia went back to the sheep. The horse says your debt is paid. Excellent, said the sheep. Um, question, said Saskia, why didn't you just bring the apple to him yourself after I picked it? Ah, said the sheep, you would have had to help me over the fence to get out and then later back over the fence to get back in. Besides, said the sheep, this was more fun, wasn't it? But you, you deserve a reward. You have the look of someone who's just started a quest 
and might have a need for a few magical tools. So the sheep dug around in her bag of holding. She looked and looked. Mm, not this, no. Use that one already. Uh, no, not that. She'll want something better than that. Um, yes. And finally, she handed Saskia a mirror. Interesting, thought Saskia. I've always wanted to see a magic mirror. The sheep went back to her bag of holding and dug around a little more. Hmm, this, this, ah, this. A teaspoon. A magic teaspoon, thought Saskia. Okay. And the sheep dug around in her bag of holding once more, and she looked, and she looked, and finally, this, said the sheep triumphantly, and gave Saskia toothpicks? We're going with it. A mostly empty box of toothpicks, Saskia thought. Toothpicks don't seem like a very useful tool, Saskia said aloud. My dear young person, said the sheep, when magic is involved, even the hair on your head can be a useful tool. Now, off you go. So, Saskia put the probably magical mirror, teaspoon, and toothpicks into her backpack and continued down the path. It was true. Things looked a bit different. The trees seemed to be in slightly different places than she remembered, and all the bird songs sounded a little bit odd. And then Saskia heard a bird call she'd never heard before, and she turned around to see if she could spot what was making it. When she turned around, there was a mountain where the path had been. It was tall and wide and very steep and smooth. Saskia had done a little bit of rock climbing, and she liked the climbing wall at school, but there was nowhere she could get a finger hold or toe hold on those steep sides. Saskia reached into her backpack, and the first thing that fell into her hand was the handle of the mirror. No, said Saskia, how's that supposed to work? And she continued looking for something else, but every single thing she grabbed was always the mirror. Great, said Saskia, what am I supposed to do with the mirror? Check to see how cool I look? in a selfie with the mountain. And she turned her back to the mountain and held up the mirror to look. She gasped. When she looked into the mirror, the mountain was gone and the path was back. Oh, that was easy, said Saskia. Spun around and bumped her nose against the mountain. It was still there. What if I'm not looking at it, Saskia said, and closed her eyes. She took a step forward and bumped her nose again. All right, well, let's go back to what worked, she said, and turned around so her back was right up against the mountain and she was looking in the mirror. The mountain was nowhere to be seen in the mirror. Saskia reached behind her. She should have felt stone, but it felt like empty air. She took one step back. When she looked in the mirror, she saw a plain and empty path, but all around the edges of the mirror, she saw stone all around her. Saskia took another step and another, three steps in all, and bam, when she looked past the edge of the mirror, the mountain was gone and the path was back. Saskia carefully put the mirror into her backpack and continued down the path. After a little while, Saskia heard an animal noise she didn't recognize, so she looked to see if she could spot what was making it. When she turned around again, the path was gone and there was a giant dam, a tall wall of dirt holding back water. It stretched as far as she could see to the left and all the way to the steep drop off to the valley at the right. She wasn't going to be going around it and she certainly wasn't going to be swimming across. So Saskia reached into her backpack and the first thing that fell into her hand was the teaspoon. Saskia ignored it and tried to find the mirror in her backpack, but the mirror wasn't cooperating. The teaspoon, on the other hand, really was being insistent, so Saskia took the teaspoon and she thought for a while. After a little while, she realized that the teaspoon was leaning towards the valley, almost tugging her hand in that direction. So Saskia let the teaspoon lead her to the corner of the dam, and when she got there, it tugged so hard she dropped it so that it fell, handle pointing up in the top of the dam. Hmm, thought Saskia, and she dug a little at the top of the dam. She and the teaspoon 
dug a little channel about as wide and as deep as the bowl of the teaspoon all the way from the outside edge of the dam almost to the very inside and then Saskia stepped back to watch. It didn't take long and the last little bit of the dam that separated the water from the channel that she dug got soft and slumped away and a little trickle of water made its way down the channel to the edge of the dam and into the valley and then a little more and a little more and as the water ran, it took bits of dirt with it and cut the channel deeper and wider, so more water ran out, and then more, until finally the side of the dam blew out and all the water ended up in the valley. Saskia looked at the mud of the now empty holding pool, and she laughed. She took three steps, and three steps more, and bam! The mud was gone, the path was back. So Saskia carefully put the teaspoon into her backpack, and continued down the path. After a little while, Saskia heard what sounded like a tree branch falling. She turned to see if she could spot it, and when she turned back, the path was gone, and there was a giant canyon open under her feet. It was way too wide to jump, too long to go around, and much too deep to climb down and then up on the other side. So Saskia dug in her backpack and grabbed the first thing that came to hand, the box of toothpicks. She opened the box and looked inside and looked at the canyon and thought, maybe if I had something to tie them together? Then she remembered what the sheep had said. My dear young person, when magic is involved, even the hair on your head can be a useful tool. So, Saskia thought for a minute longer, then took out two toothpicks. She grabbed the, e the end of one hair, and just like her grandfather had once taught her, she cast on and started to knit. Saskia very quickly noticed three things. The first was that the knitting went faster, way faster than it ever had before. Two, was that she hadn't got to the end of the hair yet, and her hair wasn't that long. Three, was that the knitting was wider and longer, and the hair was thicker than what she had started with. Then, all of a sudden, the wind came up, and it blew the knitting out of her hands and across the canyon, where it landed with a toothpick stuck in the ground. She had somehow managed to hang on to the other end, so she put two more toothpicks in the end, stuck them in place, too. Hmm. I think I'm going to pull that back a little further so it's tighter. And then she stepped out. Woo! No, magic's supposed to work better than this. And then she stepped out onto the bridge. It didn't sag under her feet, not even a little. So she took another step and another, three more, then three more, and bam! The ground was solid under her feet, and the canyon was gone, and so was the bridge. But in her hand, Saskia noticed she was holding four toothpicks and a strand of hair. So Saskia put everything into her backpack and kept going. Saskia came around the next bend of the path, and there in the clearing was a castle. I think this might be the place, said Saskia. Weird how it looks exactly like that castle where Jane rescued Jack. Some builders had no imagination. And when Saskia got to the courtyard, she saw a treasure chest. Huh, I wonder if that's the seahorse's treasure, said Saskia. She went up to the treasure chest and took a look. There was a small brass plate on the top of the treasure chest, and it said, Seahorse's Treasure. All right, that answers that question. Saskia said, next question, how do I get it back to the seahorse? She tried opening the treasure chest, but it was locked and she didn't have a key. So she grabbed the handle and lifted it experimentally just to see how heavy it was. To her surprise, the treasure chest shrank to a size she could easily fit into her backpack. So that's what she did. And then she headed back up the path. She had, Saskia had walked three steps, times three steps, times three steps. So 
went in seven steps and no more when, bam, she was back with the seahorse. I could get used to traveling like this, said Saskia. Anyway, I think this is your treasure. She pulled out the treasure chest from her backpack and it grew in size to the way it had been before. It is, nodded the seahorse, let me show you. And the seahorse took the treasure chest and opened it. Inside, Saskia saw a glint of gold. It was a chocolate chip cookie recipe? Your treasure is a recipe for chocolate chip cookies, Saskia said. I mean, a gold recipe card and all, but still. Oh, sweetie, said the seahorse. A recipe that makes really good chocolate chip cookies is a real treasure. You know how when you get the cookies fresh and warm and the edges are all buttery and crispy and the center is fluffy and a little bit chewy from the oatmeal and the chocolate chips are all melty? Mm, I love that. It's so peppy. But don't take my word for it. Try one. And the seahorse tapped the recipe card against the ground and a plate of warm chocolate chip cookies appeared. Ooh, now that is absolutely a treasure, said Saskia. The recipe actually makes the cookies for you. You don't have to do any work. She had a nibble of one of the cookies. And the cookies are amazing. They are, aren't they, said the seahorse. Would you like a copy of the recipe? A copy is never as good as the original, but it's certainly something. Of course, said Saskia. And the seahorse reached into the treasure chest again and pulled out a copy of the recipe card. Now, Saskia's copy was never, wasn't as good as the original, so the cookies never made themselves. But the cookies turned out perfectly every time, even the time Saskia forgot all the sugar. And every time she made cookies from that recipe, no matter how many people were there, there were always enough cookies for everyone with exactly five cookies, no more, no less, left over for the second day. And that is the story of Saskia's quest for treasure. Thanks for joining us for this South Central Regional Library video. See you in the next one. You know, even with the toothpicks and the seahorse and the recipe card, it actually turned out pretty well. Um, I think I should post the recipe. I mean, it'll only be a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy, so not so magical, but all right.